Welcome to the Warmness Machine Podcast. My name is Lindsay. This is a fiber arts podcast. I am a crocheter, a knitter, and a spinner. Um, I do have a loom. I do have a book from the library about weaving. Not yet. So, aside. <laughs> Welcome. This is an inclusive, safe space. Grab something to drink, eat, make, and we can get started. This episode, I'm going to be talking about some finished objects, some spinning, some things I'm working on, the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, and at the end of every episode, I do a children's book recommendation because we frequent the library. I'm a library advocate and enthusiast. And yeah, so I had a huge cup of tea that got cold and I can't drink that anymore because you know, I'm old now. And so now I'm on the water. And so yeah, let's get started. The first object, the first finished object I'm going to discuss is a very small one. Um, I am, okay, so I made a sock study for myself. If you don't know, my training and education is in education. <laughs> I'm a teacher, um, specifically an adult ESL um, educator. And um, because I love all things study and learning and things like that, um, I am a nerd, <laughs> to put it very simply. So I created a little sock study for myself that I shared in a previous episode. And one of the designs on the sock study was um, uh, the No Fear Shorty Sock by Denise DeSantis, who is also known as Earth Tones Girl on YouTube. And I will leave a link to everything about uh, her and everything I talk about in the video down below. So, where is it? Where are these beautiful socks? They're here. These are the No Fear Shorty Socks. She has um, videos on YouTube that accompany her pattern and it, show you, it shows you everything you could ever learn or need to know in the beginning about sock knitting. And I kind of became a knitter to knit socks. <laughs> so, um, yay. <laughs> so these are the finished object. This is in the colorway Marigold Bridge from Treehouse Knits. It's not available anymore, but it was inspired by the Coco movie, Coco. And I never saw that movie, but I really want, I don't really see movies anymore. I just don't have the brain space for them. Even though I did recently see Dungeons and Dragons on Paramount Plus, but I was at home and it took me like four days. So, but what are different about these socks that are different from the pattern? Well, the pattern calls for long tail cast on and I did a German twisted cast on because um, because I just learned it and I, and I just wanted to practice. So that's that. These, this is a two by two rib with a slip stitch heel and one sock is a smidge bigger than the other, or one sock is a smidge smaller than the other. Either way. Um, I'm super duper excited about these. They were going to be my socks, but they're for somebody who has the same size feet as me. They're a gift. So I'm very excited about that. Um, other than that, what else do I have to say about these socks? Nothing. It was pain-free, super fun knitting that, yeah. Ever since I picked up sock knitting, I now have something like a little project to take with me when I know I'm gonna be waiting. And I don't have to schlep around a big, you know, a completely huge and big bag full of a sweater project, you know, and then I get confused or whatever. No, 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 socks. So, yay. That's a finished project number one. My second finished project is 
the Aztec sweater by Nomad Stitches. And I just wanna, before I show it to you, just wanna go through all the little details about it. I like to keep a little form of what I learned, what I liked, what I didn't like, um, the gauge, the yarn, all that stuff. So I have a little form that I use and then I type it in and I print it out and I put it in my little folder because again, I'm a nerd. Um, so the this pattern was different. Center single crochet stitch, which I will not demonstrate in this video um, because I don't think I have the time. However, um, I would love to show you in another video because it's really cool. It kind of simulates um, the V stitches in knit stitches and um, so in stock knit stitch, I should say. The pattern gauge was 17 center single crochet stitches, 25 rows within 10 centimeters or four inches. Um, it calls for five millimeter hook and a four millimeter or 3.5 millimeter hook for the um, cuffs or the hem around the neck or the ribbing. Um, I used a four millimeter and a five millimeter hook but my gauge swatch for this project is lost. It's missing, so I will just show you in the sweater. But that gauge swatch was about 17 to 19 stitches and 24 rows within um, a 10 centimeter square. And if I showed you, the, if I knew where the swatch was, I just had it. If I knew where it was, I would show you exactly why my stitches are a little weird because I'm not quite sure how to do a swatch in the round with center um, single crochet. I did it. However, I did not do it in color work and the color work has a larger gauge than just the single color. Um, am I mad about it? No, no. What I loved most about this sweater was the color work and immediately went to Ravelry and tried to find something else in color work. I do have um, a pattern in my make nine for the year that does have color work, but it is knit. So I'm just gonna slide over there and do that in a minute. But, okay, so this is the Aztec sweater. It comes, let me see these, these are, these pants come to right here, right to my belly button. So it's right below my belly button. Um, and I liked, I like that fit. You can see that there's some cool detailing here and here that match. I made the cuffs a different color from the neckline and the bottom hem because I just could not get enough of this color. This color is called apple pie. The green is called pine tree. Apple pie is discontinued. I don't know if pine tree is discontinued. I don't think this color snowfall is discontinued. Um, but yeah, so my yoke is a little bit lower than it should be. It should be probably about a half an inch up and therefore everything else would be an inch up, but I don't mind. This is my, this is my arm. That's my armpit right there. And so there's a little bit of space, which you actually kind of need to move. But yeah, this is it. This is it. And I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. So yeah, Aztec sweater completed. Thank you so much. <laughs>
And so, um, let me show you the yarn. Let me show you the gauge swatch. Let me tell you about the needles that I'm using. And let me show you the pattern first. So this is the pattern. It's, um, this pattern is not charted. Um, it is just written out and it's supposed to be fairly simple. And I'm, I've completed one row of lace. Okay, and I'm on to these, um, this garter stitch that's going around and I'm, I haven't done it yet, but I'm very excited. So let me first show you the yarn. Um, it's going to be a little bit all over the place, especially since I don't know if I can, I don't know how to use a ball winder correct, correctly. I do, but I don't like clearly this is wound up well, but you see how fine this this yarn is, this is fingering weight, but then it'll switch between fingering and sport. Meanwhile, this is more on the sport weight side. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then I have this one too, which is also, uh, you know, fluctuating between sport weight and fingering. And I'm gonna just lean with it, rock, rock with it because I don't care, you know. The whole point of doing and making is to learn and I will get better with time. I'm just not that good now. <laughs> or I wasn't that good when I did this last year, so I really, but this color, I went through such a brown phase at that time. Um, and this, these browns are like, just they still speak to me so much. So um, let me show you the shawl, or at least as much of it as we can get. This is the, the gauge swatch. It is in four US, US four hook. I think the pattern calls for US six. Um, and I just, because of my fluctuating yarn, just picked a four and thought that would be a good um, situation. I am using lifelines with cotton and you'll see that this is thicker. And then I decided for the next one because the yarn is so thin to kind of, um, split the singles and put a, you know, make sure it's a little bit finer. So this is the shawl. It's got good coloring, just changing throughout from the brown, from the dark browns to the light browns. And you can see my lace is not looking awful. Um, when I was doing just the, this part with the garter stitch, I kind of missed a one stitch, I missed one increase. So I tried to do it and then I, I messed it up. I didn't rip back. I didn't rip back. So you see, I, I don't fix every little mistake. I just sometimes just do whatever, but I'm okay now. That was somewhere in here that got fixed before I did the lace. And I have to say, lace is a little addictive. So, Get you some, if you haven't done lace, you know, it literally, I think every time I finish a project or I get into a project, I immediately go back to Ravelry and I'm like, are there more that I could do like this? Cause I'm so ridiculous. So, but yes, work in progress and also long-term project coming to fruition. So. Okay, so long-term projects, as I said before, are ways for me to learn something with, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a teacher, right? And think of it as a thematic unit, you know? If you're gonna learn about going to the store, you need to learn how to ask questions about going to the store. I, I taught ESL, right, to adults. So if you have a thematic unit, you're going to talk about going to the store. What would you buy at the store? What questions would you ask at the store? How would you speak to the clerk? You know, there'd probably be money involved in that um, in that unit as well. And so these are kind of like thematic, these long-term projects are my thematic units, if you will. I'm taking a project from start to finish, learning a lot about the fiber, learning a lot about the spinning technique, learning about um, knitting it in a certain way, whatever that is, and then finishing and wearing it and enjoying it and being very proud of myself, right? So 
for this long-term project, I have it from a book and I'm gonna show it to you. It's right here. So it's from this book. This book is called Yarn Texture. It is by Jillian Moreno and yeah, I think next episode I should do a review of this book because I really actually liked it and I read it all and clearly. So um, I have some notes in here. Um, for my long-term project, I am making the Maya cardigan. It is designed by Kristen Kapoor and it looks like this. You can see that there is some lace detailing here. It's, this is the perfect length. And the construction for this is raglan. It's a raglan construction. So there's gonna be some decreases or increases right there at the edge. Lots of buttons. I love buttons. Me and my daughter, we love buttons. Like to button up, like to button down, like to do one button, like to do two buttons. I like buttons. So let me tell you a little bit about the yarn um, construction and the size that I picked. And then I'm gonna show you the fiber that I bought and some of the sampling that I did. So <clears throat> the fiber that is used in the book is called, is from Anzula Luxury Fibers, 50% baby camel, 50% Tussa silk top. It is a two ply to balance yarn 900 yards per pound. That has to do with grist. I still don't understand grist fully, so I, I can't talk about it. Um, but nine to 10 wraps per inch would be a worsted weight yarn. And um, I have my spinner's control card here. So nine to 10 would be right here. And yeah, so nine would cross over from worsted. 10 is actually worsted. And I think worsted would be 10 to nine to no, 10 to 12. Um, the smaller the number, the, the smaller the diameter of the yarn, the bigger the number, the bigger the diameter of the yarn. And because this is two ply, we're going to have to cut that number in half which really means double it so that we can know how long we're going to, how big we're going to be spinning our singles. So for a 10 wraps per inch, we need to double that because the singles need to be half that size. So we're going to be spinning 20 wraps per inch for the single so that we can get to 10 wraps per inch. Um, yeah, this is woolen draft spun from the fold. It doesn't say if it's from the tip or from the flat. It doesn't say if it's spun short backward or short forward. And so a lot of variation you could put into that. I am making the, the second size, which is called medium. And the bust for that, the finished measurement for that is gonna be 36 and 3 fourths inches. And it uses a US um, eight um, needle. Now, that's all the information that I need for this project. What did I do? I'm just gonna, it's a mess. This is a mess, but this desk is always a mess. I, again, went to Hello Fiber, um, Hello Yarn, and found a colorway that I love. There's a lot of places you can buy fiber from. You can buy fiber from anywhere. I like to buy fiber from independent dyers, not because I'm against big dyers or anything like that. I like to use this craft to support small businesses. That's it, that's it, that's all. So um, yeah, I could have gone, I mean like, it's just, I mean the Woolery is a small business too. So, um, but I didn't go to the Woolery. I wanted to support a small, small business. So the colorway for this is called Eldritch Whale, not whale like in the water, whale like whaling wall. And this is it. 
I just want to show you the variations in the colors. You can see this sometimes go to a little reddish color, a little purple, a little, a little darker brown, little deep purples over here. It's my dream. It's my dream. So let's talk about the, the fiber. And then I'm going to show you the technique that I use for my samples. Okay. So the fiber is Falkland fiber. Falkland fiber is really a fiber that comes from an island. The Falkland Islands, which are just off the, co off the coast of Argentina. Um, I think Hohi Locatelli lives in Argentina, Buenos Aires, I think. It's very cool. Um, yeah, so this is from the Falkland Islands. It is on the islands there's predominantly Polworth sheep. Polworth sheep are an Australian breed that has mixed Lincoln and Merino. And I'm looking at my, my notes right here. Um, there's also Merino sheep on the island, Corydale and Romney sheep. And so all those sheep make up the fiber right there. Um, this this fiber is 18 to 33 microns. The staple length is three to four inches. And it is described in the, and this is all from the fleece and fiber source book. And it is described as having a good soft bulkiness, which when I show you my samples, you'll understand. So um, these are my samples for the Maya cardigan. These are all unfinished. Um, this is Shetland because I had to practice the actual technique, which I just showed. Um, and this is the yarn that I just did. And you can tell here, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. You can tell that it's still very, pretty consistent. The yarn is, and now I'm going to show you on the spinner's control card. We are looking for a 10. And it looks like we have 10 right on the money or an 11, but we're looking for a 10, a nine to a 10. That's a little bit, yeah, 10, I think is actually the most perfect. So, um, let's look here. So for my samples, let me just come out. So for my samples, I had to practice the technique first, which is spinning over the fold and um, it's spinning from the flat in a worsted style, which is short forward. I have this, which I really liked the consistency, and then I did it on the Falkland. And then I tried short backward with the same technique, and then I tried just straight up short forward. And you can see that these two are just not as consistent as I would have liked as these two, especially since this kind of really gives a lot, of, a lot more plumpness see if I can find an actual this is the rest of that example these are all other examples but you see how the kind of plumpness kind of comes out it's just better it's just a here it's just a juicier kind of yarn and I like that the consistency and the juiciness of it um, afterward I took whatever yarn I had I took whatever yarn I had from the first sample and I took a US 9 and I knit this up. It's, I'm sure if it was a US 8, it, which is what I need, it would have been fine. And then this is what I did bef with example number three. Example number three? Example number three, which is the short backward. And this is what I have. I did not have, and this was with a US 7. So, as far as I'm concerned, it looks, everything looks beautiful. Um, I really love this and how it looks. It's very pretty. But these are just short samples to kind of get, and these are not wet finished. These are just, the yarn is, everything's unfinished. Um, I think I did finish this, all these yarns. I did wet finish these yarns, but I did not wet finish and block these, um, just because I wanted to see. Now, I just, 
um, want to show you the example of the yarn that I spun over the fold, on the flat, short forward, and you see it's just very consistent. I want to show you another example that I did that is just not a, a consistent. <laughs> it's just not consistent. Um, and it's this one. This is on the on the tip. So this is over the fold from the tip. I, I have not, it, it's okay. It's not awful, but it's not as consistent as as this. Move that top piece out of the way. See, this is way more consistent. And quite honestly, I, I, I'm looking for more consistency and bouncy fluffiness. And so that's why I am deciding to go with over the fold, on the flat, short forward, which I need to write down. Let me write that down. Okay. So that is how I came up with what I'm going to do. So now let's talk about the uh, Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, which I went to um, a couple weeks ago, actually. Um, we took the kids and we had a blast. Actually, we got, um, we got homemade donuts for the kids, which they immediately scarfed down and enjoyed. And then we walked around and I did not buy any yarn. My son picked out his own yarn because he likes to spend money and he loves yarn. And um, he actually, you know, he picked out really beautiful stuff. And um, I'll show that to you in a minute. But he also encouraged me to buy fleece. I have never worked with fleece before, but I was at the Spinner's Loft um, booth and I picked up a, the Shacked Flick and some Cormo that has been washed, but it's still a little... It's got lanolin on it. It's a little, it's a little dirty and not a little dirty, but just, you know, a little, it's something I'm not used to it. Let's just put it out there. I don't know what's actually going on. I'm just diving deeper into a well or a dot. Yeah, that's, that's going to be my, my catchphrase. Like I'm going down into the depths of the cave, the water cave filled with water. And I'm trying to see if I can get out on the other side. So I'm going to show you his yarn that he picked out because he's got a great eye and I'm going to show you the fiber that he encouraged me to purchase. And that's that's really all I have to say about the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I think everybody should go. It's a it's a good time. But if it's bad weather, it's gross. And um yeah. So let me show you. I don't know where he got this yarn from. Um I thought I was going to find it. But he found it at a booth in just decided he was just gonna he was just gonna do it. It's a little un undone. But this is one that he found. It is probably a bulky weight, close to worsted weight. Probably what I'm trying to do. I don't know if this is hand spun or not. 
there's no tags. <laughs> so yeah. Um, and then this is from Cozy Color Works, which I, I really love their, their yarn. I bought some yarn from them last year and he loves rainbows. So yeah, we have the rainbows. I think these go really well together and I told him I was going to make him something with those because I was not gonna give that to him. It was pretty expensive, you know? And I said, you know, we're not gonna just, he likes to make traps around the house, like a, like a spider's web around the house or in his room or anywhere. And I was like, you're not doing that with this expensive yarn, man. You go get my acrylic and you do whatever you're gonna do. So I clearly have to make something for him, but I think it's out of sight, out of mind right now for him. So is it my yarn? I don't want to, I don't want to eminent domain that yarn, you know, as my son's yarn, but, but you see my face. So the fiber he had me get, with the, this is the Shaft Flick. And, and so this is the Shaft Flick. I have no idea. I mean, I've watched a couple videos. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet but I know that this is the cheapest, easiest, first thing to buy when you're going down that deep cave. You know, down the rabbit hole, maybe. Deep cave for me. This um, episode, this month, I have two book recommendations. One is a book from my childhood that I just loved. And the other one is a book that we just picked up our library has bundles and so um there's bundles of books set up on display that have themes and so we picked up the one that had robot themes because i thought my son would really enjoy that and the kids just really enjoyed that bundle um and one of the books that i enjoyed and that they enjoyed and that has a really beautiful story um is this one and it is i'll come over here it is called the Little Wooden Robot and the Log Princess. And it also won a Best Illustrated Children's Book um, from the New York Times, New York Public Library. And it is by Tom Gould, Gould, Tom Gould. What is this book about? This book is about I'll show you the first page. It says, there once lived a king and a queen who happily ruled a pleasant land, but they had no children. So the king and the queen separately endeavor on getting a child. One goes to a very clever witch and the other goes to the um, palace inventor. And they both end up having getting a little wooden robot for a son and a log princess for a daughter. And um, it talks about what happens um, with one day. I don't want to give you any, I don't want to tell you anything else. I don't want to tell you anything else. It's such a good book. It's such a good book. And if you have children who have siblings, I can't recommend it more. So yes, I don't want to say any more, but beautiful, beautiful illustrations, wonderful story. And um, I definitely am picking this book up from the bookstore because it's one that everyone should have. So yeah, the second book is from my childhood. My mother bought me this book and I tell you, I don't know where it is. I don't know how I lost it. It's a little sad to me that I lost it, but I've remembered this book for many moons, many, many years, I should say, many years I've remembered this book. And I've also often tried to emulate the writing style. Um, so this is for your children who, I don't know, enjoy rhyming. This is called A Joyful, A Joyful Noise, not A Joyful Noise, just Joyful Noise. It is Poems for Two Voices by Paul Fleischman, illustrated by Eric Beddoes. And it has also won an award. Uh, it has won the John Newberry Medal 
awarded annually by the Children's Librarian Section of the American Library Association for the most distinguished contribution to American literature for children. And this is awesome. It's got really beautiful illustrations. And the, my favorite poem, one of my favorites, is called Water Striders. And you read this with two people. One person reads this side, the other person reads that side. So um, this is called Grasshoppers. I want Water Striders. Was water Striders. Here it is. This was one of my favorite poems. Um, I was really into poetry as a young girl. Whenever we're asked if we walk upon water, we answer, of course, to be sure. It's quite true. So you read this with somebody and it just sounds amazing. And yeah, it's very funny. There's one poem about mayflies, the moths serenade. Um, it's all about insects in this one. And I, I'm so excited to recommend these two books to you. So um, that's my episode. That's all I got to say, I'm done. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry if it was too long or I was too long winded. You will never believe how much time it took to record this. I mean, the kids kept coming in and the neighbors and my partner and my dog. So at any rate, in any case, I hope you uh, have a wonderful, wonderful making day, wonderful, wonderful um, month making um, until next time. And I'll see you soon. Bye.